have been fighting for centuries. What does that mean? Huh? China is here? I don't even know what the hell that means. All I know is this low pan character comes out of thin air in the middle of a goddamn alley while his buddies are flying around on wires cutting everybody to shreds and he just stands there waiting for me to drive my truck straight through him with light coming out of his mouth? Jack, please. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, everyone in between, geezers, skeezers, sleezers, Ebenezer's late to the party. We've got a great one today. Big Trouble in Little China. Seven point two out of ten on IMDb. Seventy four percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Seventy nine percent on Just Watch. Whatever that is. <laughs> Starring Kurt Russell, Dennis Dunn, James Hong, Victor Wong, Kim Cattrall, Susie Pai. Carter Wong. Let's see who else. I want to get the storms in here. I don't got all the storms. Larry Franco, Al Leong, dude, Al Leong, Every. Ronald Lee, Kate Burton, Leah Chung, Jeff Imada, all the bells and whistles. Al Leong. We can go into a whole rabbit hole on Al Leong. Let's see. Kurt Russell plays a hard-boiled truck driver, Jack Burton who gets caught in a bizarre conflict within and underneath San Francisco's Chinatown. An ancient Chinese prince, a Chinatown crime lord, and Chinatown crime lord has kidnapped a beautiful green-eyed woman who is the fiancé of Jack's best friend. Jack must help his friend rescue the girl before evil Lopan uses her to break an ancient curse that keeps him a fleshless an immortal spirit. Release date July 1st, 1986. Director John Carpenter. Screenplay Carpenter, David Z. Weinstein, Gary Goldman. All right. Budget 25 million. Music composed by Carpenter and Alan Howarth. <laughs> Distributed by 20th Century Studios. Box office 11.1 million. Ooh, lost money, huh? Yikes. No, so, it did terrible when it came out. When it came out, yeah, when it came out, like there was a run of Carpenter movies that in the theater did like horrible. The Thing is one of them. Like when the Thing came out, it came out right when ET came out. So like everyone was talking about aliens and hugging them and stuff. He was making an alien that fucking ripped you apart and shit like that. And you know what I mean? And so and I think Big Trouble came out like right afterwards, and they were just like, like everyone hated on it. Like I was telling my kid. When you know when you're a kid, like when you're a baby and you're uh, you get to the age where you can finally figure out how to work the VCR in our time, you know, like you figured it out. And there was like always cassettes around and you'd always put like the same three cassettes in. This was one of them that I literally just put in all the time. And it was from a dubbed version off of HBO. So I like memorized that movie. Like I love Big Trouble in Little Chinatown. This oh, it's great. Is, this hits the hearts more than Rad does. Okay, let me tell you. <laughs> so you're gonna you're gonna pick, you're gonna hit it with a preemptive forty. Oh, dude! Oh, you have no idea. We're, we're we're gonna give it a regular movie review and then a fuzzy like fucking heartfelt movie review. Where if I cry, dude, you know what I mean. Don't edit that shit out. Let people see it, dude. Let the emotions flow. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I like this it. one. This was great. This one's great. I oh, had a yeah. good time with it. I loved Kurt Russell playing a modern version of John Wayne. That's exactly yeah. what they did <laughs> when when Carpenter sat down with Russell, right? Like because they were doing, I think they did the thing, and he was talking with him about it, and he goes, "I want you to play like the worst John Wayne." Like that was his his like directing he was like just be john wayne in the worst way and like he you literally hear it in his voice like when he's on the fucking mic and he's just like well you tell him did you pay your dues you tell him the checks in the mail <laughs> i want to be a trick and just like to says. talk to people like <laughs> kids nowadays are gonna be what the hell is a check <laughs> You know, I... And then he has a rotary phone. People are going to be like, what the hell is that? What is that? In this That's what a cell phone looked like? <laughs> I've always wanted to... Whenever I go on a road trip, I think I think of the the, 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 
romanticize that, like a CB radio. And I always think of Jack Burton whenever, whenever I get into those moments. Park so Shop it's got, Express. yeah, it's got some, uh, it's got some martial arts choreography in it. It's got a little bit of uh, wacky Chinese magic stuff. Uh, Egg Chen and his funky face and his eyes and whatnot. <laughs> that guy's great. So the best scene with Egg Chen. That scene isn't even a scene that's but meant to be funny. But me and the kid, I showed it to with my my oldest. We sat and watched it, right? And so he was like, and I'm like, watch this, dude. My egg chen looks like a Muppet. And like at one point when he's driving and like and the car's coming at him and he had to like swerve the bus out of the way. <laughs> he's like, ha, da, ha, ha. Like, like the Muppets when they get mad and they run away like that. Dude. Like, <laughs> die laughing. <laughs> ah. <laughs> yeah, he made, so he made it's funny got, faces. So this this movie right here. It has got the most. It's got an actor that's appeared in more of our reviews than any other actor, and that's Al Leong, who was in Big Big, Big Trouble in Little China. He was in Lethal Weapon. He was in Die Hard. It's like we got to f- figure out what else he was in so that we can get him into more reviews. <laughs> When we were watching it, he comes out of the shadow off the side of the car and we're like, careful, he's going to steal your candy bar. <laughs> 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 I forgot that he was in it until I saw it. I was like, oh, oh no. Oh, dude, the best part of that scene is whenever they, after like they do the bit, they unload like all those loads, uh, uh, unload those loads, unload the bullets on the fucking, on the wall and stuff. And all of a sudden all the guys come out and they're like, <laughs> That shit, dude. I was walking around the house going, mm, what's up? Oh, I'll fuck you up. That's how they do their thumbs up, man. If, next time I get into a fight, I'm going to literally do that right before I start. I'm just going <laughs> to just watch the guy shit himself. Dude. He's going to fucking be like, I've seen that movie. You know, I would love to get it together with some people and cosplay the storms. Once I watch this movie again, there was a. What's that? We saw somebody at a convention that was walking around as the storms. It was a wonder con from, I don't know, three or four years ago. It was probably the last one you went to. Three or four years ago? I haven't been to a wonder con in like a decade. No, that's not true. We went for your birthday. It popped up on our thing, you dumb shit. But anyway, uh, they, they came dressed. It was They had low pan and then the three storms. And they were dressed up. And I was like, I think I'll have to go through my uh, photos and see if I can pull up a picture of it. Because I made sure to take it. They were walking around. It was like a group cosplayer. And it was pretty cool. They did a really good job. Yeah, I'd love to do it. I just got to get somebody to do it with. The, uh, I saw... I'll be Jack Burton. <laughs> Bearded Burton? Yes, I'll shave yeah, the beard. Yeah, but the low pan wasn't the tiny... <laughs> it wasn't the, like... Uh, Dude, thing. if you're going to shave the beard, the, do Jack Burton, I'll make it fucking pan. happen. <laughs> I'll shave it. I don't care. I'm a, I commit to my roles. <laughs> <laughs> all, right, yeah, I, all right i gotta put some thought into this now i remember uh, we were I was watching it this time this is one with like kim cattrall i forgot she used to be like this sweet young like you know all american kind of looking girl like she's with oh, she's american sour and, and old this, like she's yeah, sour she old and orange well. She's just, she's become like cranky. <laughs> That's when I see her in like something like Sex in the City. She just became like this like cranky, like, ugh, I don't know. But, but you I have forgot. to admit, this is, this has to be one of her worst acting roles that she's ever done. Like the whole time I'm watching her and and this coming from a movie that's all full of like cheesy acting, like, you know, you know Kurt Russell's trying to do that, so you're like, you're succeeding. You know, you're watching these other guys. You can see her, and you're like, you know she's trying her hardest, and you're like, this is horrible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Like her screams and shit. I was like, oh, God, that sucks, dude. I was like, yeah. But yeah. I love it still, dude. I still love it. I was, and- he was going to marry us. And, oh. <laughs> <laughs> And nerdy Kurt Russell when he goes into the brothel. I forgot how cutesy he looked. He reminds me, like, because I used to watch, because he was started off being a Disney. He was one of the original like, Disney, Disney loved him. Guys. 
and they used him a lot. And <laughs> when he like dresses like the little nerdy guy going to the brothel, I was like, oh my gosh, I forgot. Like that looks like him from when he was like in his old like Disney days. <laughs> you, like, they, it was so funny. I had like these flashbacks of him with like the the mule that kicks the ball in the football game and <laughs> all kinds of yeah. Well, I love his Jack Burton's awesome just because he's like I was, I was shown you know I, I've been showing these movies to my kid because you know he likes filmmaking and stuff and I was trying to explain to him why I think this is like one of the best heroes of all of all like written film like Jack Burton because he's he's literally a nobody you know what I mean? Like he's, he's just, he talks a lot of shit. You know what I mean? He just, dra- and he just happens to know like everyone hey, around him. Oh. <laughs> yeah, he's like, he's like even, even down to like the part where he fucking, you know, the door opens up and he fires off the gun. He kills a couple of them. The gun jams and he's like, shit. And he gets down to get the knife out, but he can't get out. So he runs to the corner and shit to try to fucking get, yeah. And he like pops out and everyone's already fucking knocked down. He just like, <laughs> All right, fuck it, dude. Like, and then even, even the one cool scene where he gets the knife and that big guy comes at him and he stabs him, he gets stuck and you literally hear him go, ah, shit. <laughs> he can't get up off the guy, you know what I mean? Like, he's just, he's awesome, you know what I mean? Like, he's, it's just like, I told my kid, I was like, I love that because you could, like, when they say, like, I want to relate, like, he could be anybody, you know what I mean? He could be any one of us, you know, and, then, and he's in this heroic thing around all these crazy ass people are shooting lightning out their hands and stuff like that. And he's just along he plays for the confusion ride. confusion very well, cause he's like, huh? <laughs> what? <laughs> they did like you, a Ninja Turtles to. show. Not the, Who's, not the jacked up looking one, but the one that was pretty good. The one he ended like five years ago. And they did, uh, they had characters. They had Ho-Chan and he had the storms with him. And uh, and they fought the Ninja Turtles. It was so cool. It was a really nice throwback. Uh, well, the, I wanted them to come out with inspired everything. It inspired every like everyone has seen this movie. Like like I, I I trip out when people go. I've never seen Big Trouble in Little China. I'm like really dude. Like it you know Raiden from fucking Mortal Kombat was inspired. You know because of this guy. You know what I mean? Like come on. Like every every throughout history, there's every some Carpenter doesn't get his due respects out of all the things that he has just done by accident. You know what I mean? It wasn't like he, and he's just making a fun movie and stuff like that. And he inspired everyone to do all these other things. And I mean, you watch, you watch any, any, any scene in that movie and it still holds up to this day. I mean, other than like you were saying the rotary phone and fucking, you know, like shit like that, but like, you know, the characters and shit, like they, like even down to when the fight's breaking out, like I'm dying laughing because everyone's got, you know, they're in the gang war and he's in the truck and he pulls out the knife and you, they like cut to him and he's like this, he's like looking like I'm gonna kill someone with this fucking knife. And these guys got machetes and fucking they're killing each other left and right. <laughs> and then the way him and Lopan, or not Lopan, um, Egg Shan, they talk when he's about to give him this, the the potion. Does it give you all those? Make you see things you haven't seen? Yeah, like like fire and stuff. Yeah. Well, all right then, let's get it going. <laughs> We've been awfully quiet. Favorite scene. And we want to try to get our. He's been so quiet. I want to get all the good stuff out before he stabs us all. The. Uh... <laughs> he likes his movie. My favorite scene is the end of the movie where everybody everybody couples up and pairs off, and, and Kim Charles Tr- Tr- like turns sideways and puts her foot against the wall and waits to be whisked away, and he's like, "Nah." <laughs> 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 yeah, like, well, even when they're in the sewer and they're swimming, can't and concentrate like, with you rubbing your body all over my body. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Right? Love that she had her chance. She had her chance in the sewer. <laughs> Essentially, that was it. Yeah, you had your chance, but okay. <laughs> My favorite scene is when uh, when they're trying to lead all the prostitutes out and they get to that big green sliding door 
And he's like, okay, on my count, we're all going to run out. And they're like explaining it to all the whores and Chinese and everything. And he's like, all right, one, two, three. And he opens it up and like all the bad guys are right there. And he slides the shot. He goes, we might be trapped. <laughs> and the first bad guy, the first bad guy when he opens the door, it's Al Leong. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that scene too, man. Like such a good scene. Like even, I'm telling you, it's just that. Like my ultimate favorite scene, besides like you know the typical Jack Burns scene, is literally the scene when they're about day. Uh, and I always remembered it as a kid. It was always my favorite when they sneak in at the end, and he's now like Lopan is now human, and he's like you know he's telling Kim Cattrall he's fucking got all the he could do things you can't be seen, you know. I could use doing it all smooth and shit, and then the door opens up after they're making out, and the, and the lipstick's like all fucking sideways like that on his face, and he's walking in like a badass and shit. <laughs> I mean, the way he goes, like he's like something to Mr. Burton, and he pulls out the knife and he throws it, and it fucking misses him. Fuck, like <laughs> he picks up the knife and he goes, "Nice knife." Goodbye, Mr. Button. And he throws it and fucking he catches it, hits him in the head. I was like, fuck yes, dude. And I watched it with the kid. The kid goes, that's it? That's 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 the end of the bad guy? I say, shut up. All right, shut <laughs> up. We didn't have CG and shit. All right, I'm sure they ran out of money. So th that's what you get. <laughs> and he made fun of the fact that scene where they were flying, like back and forth, like doing the sword fight. And he goes, what what is that like why don't they just fight i go look dude you got to remember this is in the 80s when we had nothing this was this was like superman flying through the air with those things the, the screen flying behind the guys like, ting, ting. like they were moving their swords slowly but everything behind him was going like that and shit like that it was fucking awesome dude that's it's good filmmaking I think, I think my favorite scene is uh when they're in their their wheelchairs and they wheel them up and he Lopan first comes out, David Lopan, not just regular Lopan, but David Lopan comes rolling out and they have their conversations and he, there's just some lines where he goes, see, this this, this really pisses me off when he gets all mad at him and because he gets his voice so high. But the other thing too is when he's explaining like how he's going to come to power and what's going to happen, he's like, oh, and Jack's like, oh, and you're going to like rule the world and or go to a funny farm, whichever comes <laughs> yeah, um, just like that whole, like, he's just non-phased at that point about what's happening you know what i mean he's that's the thing with the whole thing with this movie with him is that he's absolutely just he has you, you see his moments of like fear like in the truck when he pulls out the knife and then all of a sudden that guy like shows up and he's like go jack go and he just decides to like drive the but you see he's got that moment of panic oh, okay let's just do this like i don't know <laughs> And then just, yeah, like every time he sees him, the, the, the guys come down and just all that, like every, every little bit, he has that moment of like, oh shit, what's happening? And then all of a sudden he's like, okay, let's just get this shit done so I can get my truck and get the F out. Because that's, I mean, yeah, when you, when you say he's an everyman too, is that he's on the phone for like 20 minutes in the movie calling in his insurance trying to figure out. I love that what, line, the line truck. of... Tell me this is an act of God, and he's and he's and he's in like a cute little robe and everything on top of it, you know. The way the, the way he says, I don't know my policy number. It was in the exactly. glove compartment. Like he's exactly. just, he's sitting, and then at the same time he's talking. Who? Lopan? Little Lopan? The one I ran my truck through? Yeah, I don't know the policy, okay, dude? Like, <laughs> exactly. like, he's listening to both conversations, but it's just like, yeah. It, yeah. But when he's finally faced with, like, the Lopan, when he first comes out, he sees him, he's like this crotchety old dude. At first, he's like, the fuck is this? And then he oh, realizes other, what's happening. The other best scene. The airport. We keep forgetting the airport, and he sees oh, a yeah. guy, and he's trying to flirt with Kim Cattrall, and then he sees the little Asian gangsters come up, and he's like, "Now nah, look here, buddy." Like he does, like in the beginning of a John Wayne. That dude pulls out one knife, and then he clicks the button, and the sword comes out. He goes, "Where'd you get that?" He <laughs> 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 said, "Where'd you get that?" I was like, "That's so good, dude." He's all confused. like, I. I remember being a little kid, like, because, again, I love this movie so much. I would watch four movies, dude. You guys are going to laugh your asses off. These were the four movies I would watch religiously. 
Number one was always Back to the Future. Love Back to the Future. That was like one of my favorites. Number two was Big Trouble in Little Chinatown. Number three was The Secret of My Success. I don't know why, but I loved that movie when I was a kid. Oh, the movie's so and, good. Michael J. Fox, that, right? Yep, that was why oh, I watched yeah, it. I was yeah, like, yeah. oh, I was like, it's it's the guy from Back to the Future. And number four was Lethal Weapon. Those were my those were the movies I'd watch. But randomly, Secret of My Success is stuck in there, and I would watch it religiously. But I'd always be pissed that none of those had toys. I'd always be looking for. I'd go into the toy KB toy store and be like. You guys have big trouble in little Chinatown action figures, and like once in a while, a guy would go, "Oh, I wish," you know, kind of thing. And I'd then he'd show me a GI Joe or something. I'd be like, "All right, I guess I could pretend this is fucking Jack Burton and <laughs> stuff." <laughs> <laughs> the one, the one that I always remember, mask. Remember yeah. the toys mask. Mobile a, armored they, strike command. Yeah, they had that truck. That was my pork chop express and shit. And that, John, was, John, like, John, that was my jack. That, that was my. That, that truck's was my money nowadays in good shape. Mm-hmm. Crazy. No, I'm getting ready to do a toy. I'm getting ready to do a toy sale. I was looking up toys. I was like, God dang, these things are worth money now. Yep. Toys are money, dude. Toys are money, and you could still get stuff. It's easier to get a hold of toys than it is to get a hold of comics. Hey, was yeah. this movie done though after Escape from uh, Escape from New York? Right? Yeah. It was the thing Escape from New York, and then this one. Those no, the the Escape from New York. That's oh, okay. the first, and then then the, then thing, the thing, then okay. this. Gotcha. And I think They Live was originally written for him. Like he was trying to do a bunch of them with Kurt, and then he met uh, Piper, and then they did They gotcha. Live Together. I didn't realize that they had worked together so much. <laughs> it's like him on the male side with Carpenter. It's Kurt Russell and John Carpenter, and it's Jamie Lee Curtis and John Carpenter. <laughs> Too bad like it didn't make its money on the on the on the on the, on the first go through, because this is one that I would have liked to have seen a sequel for, but I don't want to see a sequel of a, a seventy-year-old uh, Jack Burton and low pan. He looks like he's four thousand instead of two thousand years old. <laughs> I don't know. He still kind of looks the same to me. I know. I think we he can pull it off. With. <laughs> there's a, there's a comic there's a comic run there's called comic Old Man book. Jack. Yeah, Old Man yeah. Jack is about him being old and stuff like that. And I read it. It's pretty good. You know what I mean? I don't think that should be the next movie, but like it's a good you know good read and stuff. The first the first series of Big Trouble in Little China comic series it it took it takes place right after. The movie right. because it's about the yeah i had that in my that pool escaped. yeah the, and the yeah. monster became his pal yeah <laughs> him and, the monster. and then you find out that there's like another monster there's like a second monster out there and yeah it was like a there he's making it was jack burton love connection is what it was for the uh yeah it was pretty funny it was a good story actually i think it was idw that did it if i'm not mistaken or boom i think it was boom Okay. I don't know, but don't. Yeah, you. You it's probably it's know more than I would. Or boom. I'm not sure which one. <laughs> I'm they going with that. Like I'm going with one. you though. What do you say I go with? Yeah, one of those two. <laughs> Sounds great. All right. Well, let's do it. Buckets, buckets of spilled popcorn. Or let's see, Jada, you got more for us? Well, I mean, I was gonna, just going to say that uh, Big Trouble in Little China is like a love hate thing for me because. Uh, the movie has all these elements that you really love. You know, the the martial arts action. It's got your your classic everyman hero. It's got the the pretty leading lady. It's got uh, you know these these Chinese demon spirits of the storms and Lo Pan, all of that stuff. But the movie is so campy and so choppy, and it, you would think that it's poorly edited, but it feels intentional. <laughs> and uh, and so I, I'm. I enjoy watching the film, but it's kind of like in spite of itself. And I can understand kind of why it didn't do well when it came out, because like a lot of the scenes just don't fit together real well. The dialogue is like just coming out of left field sometimes. And you're like, what? why would you say things like that or, or, or act in that particular way? It just 
it comes across as very disjointed, but I can't help but like it. It's uh, it's almost counterintuitive. The, and the only other it thing I was confuses and bewilders the jaded geek. The only other thing I would say <laughs> is that is that I wonder. This is the first time it kind of occurred to me, and it's probably because we just got back from Bruce Arama. But it occurred to me that Jack Burton is kind of like the precursor to Ash Williams, who is another everyman hero who's kind of dumb. Only, in my opinion, I think Bruce Campbell does it better than than Kurt Russell does. His, even though his hero is dumb and kind of like wins the day through you know sheer machismo in the same way that Burton does, um, Ash doesn't come across as as discombobulated as as Jack does. And plus, he's got a chainsaw for a hand, so that that's pretty cool. <laughs> so, um, no, I, I like this film. I don't want want people to think I don't like it. It's just I recognize that there are. There are some issues with it that might make it borderline unwatchable for a lot of people. You saw it when you were young enough to be endearing. You know, I don't remember when I first saw this movie. It might not have been until I was in high school. Um, but being that I've always been like a D&D kind of guy, you know, the idea of like ancient demon spirits and, you know, undead sorcerers and you know, monsters and that all that kind of stuff was very appealing. So that probably, you know, was hitting the nail on the head for me at the time. Um, but I've never, I've never been Im impressed all that much with the two main protagonists. The only thing that saves Jack Burton is his, his uh, bravado, his machismo, you know, like in the face of all this danger. But, it, but again, it feels, some of it feels disingenuous because there's a scene when, when he shoots one of the guys uh, one of the bad guys for the first time and the guy's like is that the first time you shot someone he's like no <laughs> and you're like yeah it was <laughs> so, it's a Chinese secret huh yes. somewhere deep down Josh actually does like it because he bought the blu-ray version of it <laughs> no, no, no 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 hang on he doesn't buy that we bought stuff. the blu-ray because the other one melted yeah, but we had it, so it's to be fair. So you played it. You played it that much that it melted. That's no, all right, dude. That's another way. There's another backstory there's, there's, there's behind a big, that. There's a big story. We lost <laughs> we like lost. half of our DVDs in this melting. So they oh. melted. It got too hot. Yeah, everything melted. And when we say too hot, we're talking like 160 degrees for like 12 hours. So, How'd you pull that off? Mm, uh, <sighs> that's that's <laughs> an embarrassing and long story. Yeah, perhaps in talking shit. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. How the Scots lost their DVD collection and have to rebuild it. <laughs> so anyway, right. that, that led us to getting the, the Blu-ray version. And I'll tell you what, it was one of my first comments when we put it in to watch it, is that it was exceptionally clear. It looked like it was made like last week. It was that it was that clean. So well, you know, that's it. that's 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 a conversation for talking shit too, is uh sure. film versus film versus digital. Because Well, I'm, I, if when it, well, we'll talk about it then. I'm down. I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll tell you about that shit, but yeah, but I think. How many buckets, think, Fuzz? How many buckets? This one gets. You guys uh, go my... first. You guys go first, because I'm going to. Oh, I I'm thought you said Liz, go. not Fuzz. Sorry. <laughs> go ahead, Liz. <laughs> okay. Nine out of ten. It's not the perfect movie, but it's got the action. It's got the fun. It's got a handsome leading man, you know, it's got the just, yeah, it's just, it has a bunch of different elements. It's like, you know, honestly, I think John Carpenter was just sitting there and just heard a bunch of information someplace while he was smoking out. And he's like, that'll be good. That'll be good. That'll be good. And he just has like bullet points for his movie and he let his actors kind of do their thing. <laughs> How do we stretch this out to be an hour and a half? I know. Let's put in some kung fu. <laughs> That'll do it. How do we do this? I know. Let's do that. How about this? Okay, let's try that. You know, this is just a fun movie, and I'll watch this movie time. This is when I'll sit down if it's like playing someplace. I'll be like, oh yeah, or I catch myself quoting. So this is definitely a nine out of ten for me. Nice. So I I think this movie it is definitely <laughs> fun to watch. The story I think like in its foundation is good and there's no doubt that this movie is, has had a lot of downstream influence i just don't think that the acting and directing are all that great so this one's going to get an eight for me okay 
that's fair enough. This one, this one gets a nine for me. It's, it's <laughs> got, it's got that personal nostalgia. You know, I, it, 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 having fuzzy on here is kind of shaking up the foundation of having strict rules for our show grading <laughs> and whatnot. So, uh, you These know, if I want to Lego, <laughs> right? <laughs> He, well, is he anti-Lego? Well, no, he's like the extra happy. Like he's happy when he sees Lego would just do it just to piss us off. Yeah, but... <laughs> you, you can see the genuine joy on it's... Fuzzy's face when he gives the forties and the tens and the thirty eights and all that stuff. I call him anti-Lego <laughs> though because Lego would usually give tens for things that didn't deserve it. Fuzzy gives tens to to things that he loves. But didn't necessarily deserve it. It's a different, it's a different kind of insult. Yeah, one's a spike tent and one's a and, joyful tent. And not only that, but but the worst thing that Fuzzy's ever given us has been rad. The worst thing that Lego oh, gave us was like Solaris or one of those <laughs> Hodorowski films. Good God, oh, brutal. But you know, I mean, they kind of were necessary to have an education in film, to be honest. So that's... Would... now we know what not to what we can. <laughs> Any any closing thoughts on Big Trouble? Oh wait, did Fuzzy give in? Okay, oh, yeah. no. Yeah. Okay, so let's so see. As, as a so as a fourteen, does that? Yeah, <laughs> does that... No. So as a, as a, as a film <laughs> as a film, I'm taking Fuzzy out of it, right? I agree with what Josh is saying, but I'm giving it an I'll give it a nine out of ten because I think that's what they were trying to do. So when someone tries to do something silly. I'll give them the, I go, you did it. You know, it, it, it's meant to be that way. Cause you've seen some stuff where they try to be silly and it just, it sucks. You're just like, oh my God, this is really bad. Like, this like isn't even funny. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna make me cry. I'm gonna cry right now, dude. I love it. I love it, man. I love it. But, so nine out of 10, but on the fuzzy meter because of the fucking Jack Burton and everything that comes out of his mouth is fucking, beautiful it's a quotable line i'm giving it a 25 ladies and gentlemen so <laughs> let's average them together and let's go 18. let's just say 18 <laughs> right there because let me tell you like like down down to even the way like th that you like you were saying like it, when it, you know i think ash is an everyday man i do i think he like i agree with you 110 percent is part of the reason why he is that but once you get that chainsaw on his hand no one as weird as it sounds, it's almost unrelatable. Like Jack Burton has a knife, like a little fucking knife that he carries with him. And even the tech, he doesn't know how to use the tech knife. He's just fucking firing, like, oh shit. And, then, <laughs> and, then, and everyone dies and he's like, oh fuck. Like he does, like like I've, I've, I've said it for years that action movies need to have that one hero that doesn't know how to use his gun. Like there's a, a a movie with Kevin Bacon called Death Sentence where he they kill his kid and he goes after him and shit. But there's a great scene where he like, cause he's just your everyday guy. He doesn't know how to use a gun. So when he goes to buy the guns, he's telling John Goodman, he goes, do you have an instruction manual? And like that scene where you see, you know, the flashes and they're playing the heavy metal music and they're cutting. There's literally a scene with him with the book out, like reading how to fucking load it. Like how the fuck, yeah, I was like, that's your everyday guy because your everyday guy doesn't know that shit you know like i love that that's always a thing against that works against the hero once once you like the born movies right when they did the born movies i loved jason born because he was just like supposedly trained that badass and then you got to the born legacy with jeremy renner and they were like oh they take these magic pills and they get powerful i said i hate these fucking movies this is the dumbest shit i ever fucking heard of like you got to be kidding me so like Burton is literally the guy. So for that, like fucking up there with the ratings. He baby, did take the potion. The that's that's beside the point. That was because he was, you know, he had to do it. He okay, had to do so it. But he, but he takes the potion and then what the fuck happens to him? He falls over and he has a thing hit. for most of that battle, he's knocked out when he shoots the gun. He gets knocked <laughs> out. The second thing is that he the guy comes for him and he falls onto his back and gets pinned. By the time the battle is really done, they're all gone. He doesn't do his big fight thing until the end. And then you're like, if they didn't show the bottle scene at the beginning of the movie, the knife throw scene, you think, okay, well, that's his superpower thing that he got from it. But even then, you're just like, 
what the fuck did he do with that potion? He didn't do anything with it, with it you know, if you think about it. Hey, the way he told Kim, it makes me see things that no one else yeah, sees. Yeah, he got to make out. His superpower allowed him to make His out. His machismo went to himself. that level. It that's was here, it was. and it went that's, that's like that. Like that. All right, oh, everybody else got dropping. to fly and do all their, like, kung fu stuff. He got to make out the elevator. That's, that's what the push did for him. Well, that's where I get my machismos from fucking <laughs> Jack Burton, dude. I'll tell you that, dude. Uh. It's not going to be from Jack Daniels. <laughs> oh, fuck no. But that's that's a story for another day. All right, there you have yeah. it. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Big Trouble in Little China. On a scale of 1 to 10, it was a 14. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Fuzzy made it perfect again. I don't think we ever had a movie that wasn't amazing. So, tune in next week and we'll have another singer for you. Thanks for watching.